DIYers, what's going on? Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Hey, thanks for watching a very important video today. We are going to show you how to properly and respectfully retire an American flag. There's a right way to do this. There's a proper way to do this. There's a respectful way to do this. Let's take a look. All right, DIYers, we are outside now, and unfortunately, we have had some aggressive, and I mean aggressive winds the last 24 hours. And as you can see, the American flag is caught onto the top of the LED light and ball. And it's current condition. As you can see, unfortunately, that little pin on top has ripped the flag. And that is not okay with me one single bit. And we are going to respectfully lower the flag and retire that flag and install a brand new one. DLRs, what I did next was respectively remove the entire flagpole minus the very base of it. You can see it way out there. The last thing I recommend is poking the American flag with a broomstick or a rake or I even recommend not grabbing a leaf blower and aiming it at the American flag to try to break it free in the event that this is what happens. And I'm going to remove it and I've got the flag positioned in a way where it is not going to touch the ground nor the truck. I'm going to wrap it and I'm going to put the flagpole back up and I'm not going to retire or remove the flag in this state. I am going to honor it and give it what it deserves. I'm going to install it again back on the flagpole and retire it and lower it in a respectful manner. And I might even do something with that pin there. At this point, the flagpole is resecured and the American flag is now once again flying freely. How beautiful is that? Again, out of respect for the American flag, I didn't want to use a broomstick or a rake to break it free while standing on a ladder. I chose to remove the entire flagpole and gently handle the American flag by hand and break it free. Again, we are resecured. I'm going to wait for my wife to return. This is a two person job retiring the American flag and it's overcast guys hopefully when we retire this in the next 24 hours the American flag has a chance to see the Sun one last time while flying freely on the pole all right DIYers back outside it has been about five hours and again my wife is going to help me properly retire this American flag and I know just a bit ago I mentioned how cool it would be for the sun to pop through, but it is warmed up, it has stopped raining, and the American flag has been able to fly freely for the last five hours. From here we are going to run you through the proper steps on how to lower it, fold it, and Step number one, fold lower stripe section of your flag over the blue unit field. Step number two, folded edge is then folded over to meet the open edge, keeping the blue unit field on the outside at all times. Step three, a triangular fold is started by bringing the striped corner of the folded edge to the open edge. Step number four, I'm having a little trouble because mine's ripped, but that's okay. The outer edge is then folded inward and parallel with the open edge to form the second triangle and be patient be precise keep the fold tight and secure in step five you are going to continue this triangular fold until the entire flag is folded in a triangular shape with only the blue union field visible as you can see after i make the triangular fold i take a step forward 
I stay close to the fold as you see, step forward, and each of us have a really firm grip of the flag and keeping it tight. You don't want it loose. And at this point, maybe one more fold, and you will see it go into my hands shortly after she tucks the other end inside the blue union and once she is completed with that I basically finalize the fold and once I finalize the fold I am to give it right back to her and just be patient don't rush this make sure the fold again is tight and respectful and there it is Handed it back to her, I take a step back, and I salute the American flag. Alright, the hour's inside, and a obstacle to get to our workbench. Coming around the jet ski, and here it is. Your goal is to make it as tight as you can, and no red showing. All the blue union field and stars. And here is our brand new flag and made in USA. And what we're going to do is open this up, go back out to the flagpole and raise it. And here it is, brand new American flag out of the box. Do not let this touch the ground. I have removed my gloves, washed my hands, fresh clean hands to handle the new flag. And what I recommend for storage purposes, do your best to store your retired American flag in a dry, area not on the floor where it will sit until you properly retire it It is now the next morning and sunny blue skies as you can see and now that you have properly lowered your flag removed it from the pole and folded it we are going to talk about all the acceptable options you have to finalize the proper and respectful retirement of your flag all right we are inside on the computer and what i want to do is start with just hey a quick history lesson as we do move forward with the proper and respectful way of retiring an american flag and i want to start with the date june 14th why is this flag day and i want to answer that for you june 14th commemorates the actual date in 1777 when the united states approved its first design for the very first american flag and some of you may know this but for those that don't the young lady in this photo is betsy ross aka the person that created the very first American flag. I'll go to the next photo and you can see our very first president George Washington and a couple additional congressmen visited Betsy Ross so she could present the very first design of again the American flag for approval and long story short it got approved. So again that was on June 14th in the year of 1777. From here, let's fast forward to the year 1916, and I'll go to the next photo. And if this gentleman does not look familiar to you, this is a photo of President Woodrow Wilson, which was our 28th president, and he served from 1913 to 1921. And the history books state that in 1916, President Wilson issued a proclamation asking for June 14th to be observed as National Flag Day. And to my understanding, it was kind of just referenced as opposed to being written into law as an established holiday. 
However, that was until 1923, because in June of 1923, the National Flag Conference set forth and passed rules to require state and county government offices to actually have flag disposal boxes inside or outside their buildings, which is pretty cool. And I'll go to the next photo. They didn't look exactly like this back in 1923, however, very similar. This is a more modern look to a flag disposal box or retirement box than, again, what they looked like back in 1923. I'll go to the next photo. Again, more of a modern flag box. And going back to this one, this is an indoor box as opposed to an exterior or outside box, which is this. And it even has a standalone plaque of what looks like a description of the purpose of the United States flag drop box. Again, this is an exterior box that you can find outside of government or county offices. Here's another drop box and another one. Again, these are more modern boxes as opposed to what they actually look like back in the 1920s. In addition to actually being able to insert your American flags in these drop boxes at government or county offices, you can hand deliver in person your American flag to your local police station and or fire station. And from there, your local fire department and police station will respectfully hold on to the flags until they are passed on to actual organizations that are approved and licensed to finalize the respectful way of retiring the American flag. And I will get to those organizations here shortly. However, while it's fresh in my mind, in addition to the drop boxes that you can find at your local government offices, whether it's inside or outside, as well as your local fire department and police station, there are four additional companies that participate in this way of properly and respectfully retiring an American flag. And those are Ace Hardware, Home Depot, Lowe's, and Menards. All four of them participate by having an actual retirement box inside their stores. So in the event that any of these four hardware stores are closer than a local police station or fire station, you can actually take your American flag and hand deliver it by going inside these stores and asking one of the employees where the United States drop box is to retire an American flag, and they will point you in the direction or they'll walk you straight to it. So I wanted to share that with you. And real quick, one more extremely important must do, you must fold your flag before dropping it into these drop boxes. And again, that's out of respect for the American flag. And you just saw how to properly fold an American flag. So again, just make sure you do that. Next, going back to the actual rules that were set forth by the National Flag Conference. The National Flag Conference not only set forth, but passed and officially established rules and regulations on how to properly and respectfully retire an American flag. And they call this the Flag Code, which states, The American flag represents a living country and is itself considered a living thing. These rules and regulations became active in June 1923. Now let's fast forward four years to 1927. This gentleman right here, his name is Calvin Coolidge. He was our 30th president and served from 1923 until 1929. And I bring him into the mix because in 1927, he actually reissued the proclamation for requesting June 14th to be observed as the National Flag Day. And soon after, it was literally written and established into law as a national holiday. Again, June 14th. It will not change. Like some holidays are on Tuesdays one year and might be on Wednesday or Thursday the following year, National Flag Day is not like that. National Flag Day is June 14th every single year, and it doesn't matter what day of the week that is. So again, our 30th president, Calvin Coolidge, made that happen. Now let's fast forward to 1937, where I'm going to bring the American Legion into the picture. The American Legion, again, back in 1937, passed a resolution in regards to the flag ceremonies, which, no joke, focused heavily on a well-organized and respectful method of retiring an American flag, which you would want, right? This resolution established an approved method of conducting an actual ceremony where the flag itself would be properly and respectfully burned which you will learn more about as this video goes on. We will talk more about that at a later point. However, back to June 14th, this is the date every single year that Americans celebrate Flag Day, which, to no surprise, believe it or not, has become the most popular and appropriate day to conduct American flag retirement ceremonies, which are held at night. And very, very, very important, only approved organizations can actually conduct these ceremonies. And we'll talk more about that here in a bit. But after each ceremony is completed, military personnel or a scout will stand by the actual fire to ensure that no one tampers or messes with the fire, as well as ensure that 100% of the American flags that participated in that retirement ceremony are respectfully and fully burned. And at the end, the military personnel or scout will ensure that the fire has distinguished. 
In addition, there is a nonprofit group called Stars for Our Troops. And when I learned about this organization, I was very impressed because what they actually do is they carefully cut out the embroidered stars from the flag and then hand deliver them in person to veterans. And along with that hand cut out embroidered star from a retired American flag, they attach a handwritten note that reminds the veteran that their service will never be forgotten. So I thought that was awesome. And it is extremely important for all of you to know, not everyone can just cut out the embroidered stars from an American flag. You have to be active military or a retired veteran. In other words, I as a civilian cannot do this. You as a civilian cannot do this. So keep that in mind. That's important. So again, that basically wraps up the quick little history lesson that I wanted to share with you. And from here, what I want to do is share with you my exact experience of how my wife and I chose to have our specific American flag retired. And a special thanks to the Cub Scouts Den leader and all of the scouts, as well as the military personnel that participated in the ceremony. Back to the workbench. It's been about a week. Today is Friday. I just got off the phone with the Cub Scout Den leader. And what I am going to do is transport our American flag to them. And what I did was carefully rest it inside the box that our brand new flag came in. And this is how I'm going to transport it. And tonight when the scouts meet, what they are going to do is respectfully and carefully pull this American flag out of this box or container here. And they are going to unfold it and inspect it because it has to qualify for retirement. In our case, Ours will because, again, unfortunately, it is ripped. In addition, a couple things that will also qualify are in the event that any of the stitching for the stars is becoming loose or frayed or any portion of the blue union is damaged, it will qualify for retirement. Just left the house and calm winds today for my drive to the scouts campground they're setting up shop tonight where they will again all meet this evening and we are now officially being escorted by the park police how cool is that and we are heading to the campgrounds to meet the scouts all right back in the truck we just hand delivered our american flag to the den leader and the scouts will be here in a few hours and set up camp. And this whole little area right here will be full of tents. Ceremony is tomorrow night at 9 p.m. All right, here we are back on the computer. And for confidentiality purposes, obviously, I did not film the actual ceremony, but I can talk about it. And that's what I want to share with you at this point. So again, on a Friday night, I drove out to the state park campground where the Cub Scouts were camping, and I hand-delivered our American flag to the den leader. And from there, it joins the large amount of American flags that will be participating in that ceremony. And if you're curious, these American flags come from local grocery stores, banks, schools, restaurants, and believe it or not, Ace Hardware. Home Depot, Lowe's, and Menards. Those companies will actually bring their box full of American flags to organizations such as the American Legion or the Cub Scouts to have them participate in the final stages of retirement. And when the Scouts have all the American flags in hand, what they do is unbox them and carefully unfold them and inspect them. Again, the American flag has to be qualified and approved for retirement. And once it gets its approval, it then goes on to the next stage. And there are a couple different ways to conduct a ceremony. However, first, the ceremony will always start out by the den leader and military personnel giving an extremely powerful, informative, and respectful speech. Basically just setting the tone. No joke, it was an absolute honor to participate in that and just sit there and listen and watch it all take place. And after the speech, the American flags can be gently and respectfully laid into the fire. Folded, that's very important to add. Again, the American flag must be folded with the blue union showing. And with this method, only military personnel are approved to lower the flag into the fire. So that is method number one. However, in our case, I got to witness method number two, which was incredible. And I'll tell you why as I talk about it. So let's go back to when I dropped the actual American flag off in person to the Cub Scout den leader. Once he had possession of the American flag, as well as all the other American flags that came from other people and multiple businesses and schools, all of the scouts meet to again unfold the flags and inspect them to ensure that they qualify for retirement. And if they do, the scouts will then actually cut the colors and stripes away from the blue union 
and white stars. And during the actual ceremony, this is why I mentioned method number two was awesome, and that is because during the ceremony, all of the scouts themselves got to participate. And what the den leader did was had all of the scouts in a line. And no joke, the ages of these kids were ranging from like four years old all the way into their teens. And the den leader would hand each of the scout a folded portion of the stripes or colors of the cutaway American flag, and they would be able to gently lay the striped portion of the flag into the fire. Which again was really awesome because they got to participate in the actual ceremony. And there were a lot of cuts and there were a lot of flags. And it was just so cool to see each scout be handed a portion of the flag from the den leader and then gently lay it into the fire and then really quick run as fast as they could back to the back of the line to get right back in the line to do it again. Every single one of the scouts had smiles on their face the entire time. They were just having fun. It was awesome to see. And again, they all got to learn something incredible and participate in the ceremony. However, at the very end, when all of the stripes and colors were gently laid into the fire, it came time for the blue union and stars. And at this point, there was kind of a brief pause in the ceremony as all of the scouts took a step back and the den leader shifted the focus from the scouts over to the active and retired military, which at that point took a couple steps forward and went right back into another powerful speech on why the blue union is retired last and very important. Only active military personnel or retired veterans are allowed to lay the Blue Union field into the fire. Again, very important. No civilians, none of the scouts, active military or retired veterans only, which was exactly how the ceremony was performed from this point on. The military gave, again, an awesome and respectful and honorable speech on the meaning and significance of our Blue Union field in all 50 states of America. And they explained in detail about the word united in regards to all of the states, United States of America, United We Stand, and more. And because of this, the blue union portion of the retired flags are gently and respectfully laid into the fire last, representing a well-organized and respectful way of closing out the ceremony. United. And again, their speeches were awesome. If you have a chance or opportunity to participate or join these organizations as they perform these ceremonies, I highly recommend it. You felt really good being there because it made you very proud of the military, whether active military or retired veterans. And in our case, we got to see the excitement on all of the scouts' faces. Again, age of these kids ranging from four into their teens. Again, it was just awesome to be there. And I'll go to the next photo. This is a quick little view of just a small portion of the tents at this event. If I remember correctly, this was about maybe two hours before the ceremony took place. As you can see, it's still daylight. And to the next photo, check this out. No joke. This is my exact Weeblo hat that I wore over 30 years ago. How cool is that? I thought I'd throw that in the mix. To all of you watching, we hope you enjoyed the video. Do us a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be awesome and very helpful to us. We would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching, and hey, let us know if you have any questions. Or if you've got the time and you're up to it, we would love to hear your experiences on ceremonies you have attended in the past or you just participated in. Again, that'd be awesome. Thanks again for watching.